Hey everybody, welcome to Long Story Short, the podcast. I'm Megan. I'm Wendy. And today it is time for our Pop Culture Club episode for the month of September where we talk about everything we've been reading and watching and listening to and consuming for more than the past month because it's been a minute since we've made a Pop Culture Club episode. (laughs) Yes, it has. If you want more of us outside of the podcast, you can always find us on Instagram, on TikTok. We are at Megan and Wendy in both of those places. You can also email us at Megan and Wendy at gmail.com. We have a couple emails from over the summer and just a few tips came in that I would like to share with the listeners. Tips? Tips? Mm-hmm. Listener Lisa sent us an email recommending an Instagram account from us because she knows that we are the parents of teens and tweens. And the Instagram account she recommended was at parenting teens and tweens and I was already following that account so I would agree that that's a good recommendation it's just kind of like quick clips of tips it really for me is like a little bit of solidarity a little bit of motivation a little bit of we're all in this together it's a good account I'd like it do you know if is it ran by parents or by like professionals oh well that's a great question (laughs) I'm just curious if it's just, you know, like some Yahoo like me spewing advice, parenting advice, and I don't know shit, so. It says, advice from experts and stories from the trenches. So I think it's a a combination. But the reality is when it comes to parenting advice, I think a lot of the best advice I get is from other people who are in the parenting biz, right? Like parenting alongside me. Like, yes, I want to hear from experts, but also sometimes I just want to hear from other people who are doing what I'm doing. Real life stories. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. A couple food wrecks. We did our summer food episode. I know it's been a minute, but I didn't want to let these things go by the wayside. Our listener, Jen, mentioned that she loves the chimichurri sauce from Trader Joe's. Mm. Uh, You can put it in out this particular gen happens to be vegan, but you can put it, like, you can use it to marinade, you can use it on dips, you can use it on, like, pita bread. And then you may recall that we had a frozen grape convo in that summer snacks episode. Oh, with the with the jello. Yes. With the jello, yes. Mm-hmm. So listener Lisa sent an email and she said she doesn't go to the jello level, but she does love a frozen grape. She's like chewing on ice, but she lets her thaw out a little bit before she goes to town on them so they don't make your teeth scream. I um, try to do like frozen grapes, but they're always like either too hard and then they get like gross and mushy afterwards. Uh, Uh, I recall one time being at the Grand Wailea in Maui and they came around and handed out frozen grapes to everybody. And they were like the best frozen grapes I've ever had. And somebody said it was location, location, location. It it wasn't about the grapes. (laughs) It was about being poolside and somebody handing them to you. So, Well, you know, I vividly remember the photo you took of those grapes. I can still visualize it. Really? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Okay. There are two great ways you can support the podcast outside of the podcast. The first is by leaving us a rating or a review. And you can easily do that in the Apple Podcast system. There's a handy dandy link included in our show notes. And I am going to read a recent review mm. to give you an idea of the kinds of things you might like to say below your five star rating. Okay. Great podcast. I really enjoy this podcast. It's my first go to podcast every week. Megan and Wendy talk about a lot of different topics from serious world issues to light, funny tips about everything from skincare to breakfast ideas. Their Hallmark podcast is a fun listen. Also, even though I rarely watch the Hallmark movie they're reviewing, I've listened to them all, some even more than once. Don't make it weird. (laughs) Don't make it weird. (laughs) Don't make it weird. I love it. I love it too. So thank you. That's all you need to say. Speak from the heart. I love it. Thank you for listening to the podcast episodes when you don't even watch the movies. And that makes me really happy. And then one more great way to support the podcast is by joining our Patreon community for just $5 a month. You can get access to bonus episodes of the podcast. And this week we dropped our new series exclusively on Patreon titled What's Good? I like how you say that. I I don't know why I do that, but I can't stop myself. (laughs) I did it on that episode too. I know. I know you did. I love it. Sometimes it's just nice to take a look at what's good. And that's what those episodes are all about. I want to say that I probably complain over there too, but 
I know. think we did a little bit. We keep it real, <laughs> okay. but they're just a All fun right. bonus episode. Five dollars a month, y'all. I mean, it's less than a pumpkin cream cold brew, which I had this morning, which I might regret because again, it cannot be made dairy free, but I just had to have one for the season. Oh, I'm impressed. I haven't had one yet. Mm. You know, like I'm off coffee. So like I have, I'm not, it doesn't appeal it's to me. It's not doing it for you. No, no, no. So we'll see. All right. I'm looking at our notes here and you say mm. it is the worst month of the year for you. And I'm like, how is that possible? Because it's your birthday month. It is. It is. And I do like my birthday, but it is hard when my birthday is also in a terrible month. Here's why I don't like September. Tell me. It's the weather. Oh my God. I knew this. Okay. I was thinking about this pre-show and I was like, if she's going to say weather, I'm going to suggest that she, I, okay. You know how there's like seasonal, what is it? A hundred percent. I have reverse seasonal affective disorder. Okay, the weather should not like affect the whole month for you. Like it's so, it's not crazy. It's very interesting to me that a whole month could be damaged just by the weather. Being Look, too hot. I, I'm going to tell you right now, I am 100% certain that I am not alone in the fact that being hot ruins my whole day. I'm sure you're not. It just, it blows my mind. Well. Like, because I'm like, get cool. <laughs> <You know? laughs> okay. So look, look, look. This, is, this is what you need to do for your birthday. You need to turn the AC down in your home and make it nice and chilly <laughs> for the month of September. And don't Happy go Happy birthday. <laughs> Here's a $700 electric bill. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I really want a walking pad and standing desk, but instead, <laughs> are we still on the walking desk thing? It's in my Amazon cart. And I told my <laughs> husband that if he does not buy it for my birthday, I will buy it for myself after my birthday. I am oh my getting it. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. All right. So look, I don't like being hot. I don't like being hot. I don't know what else to say. I know it's such a petty complaint. It is, but it just makes me crazy when I look at the forecast and it's like 99 104 97 98 and the lows are like 79 degrees that's 80 if it's 80 yeah. degrees at 2 a.m that's a problem but i am here to tell you that i am not just going to complain about this i actually have a plan that i have put in place to deal with this okay let me i have it. taken the megan and wendy style of dealing with unpleasant situations or stressful situations and by that i mean the way we approach things like the holiday season or summer and that is to prep our asses off hmm. so that we're not bogged down in the minutia and we can mm -hmm. focus on other things okay so for this particular case what this means is not only did i do the most enormous grocery and costco shopping so that we've got all the good drinks, all the good popsicles, fun snacks, easy dinners, like that, done. My house is a happy place full of good snacks and good drinks. Okay, good. I got a pedicure, so I feel Ooh. great wearing sandals. Mm -hmm. I did my nails. I did a ton of laundry, so I'm not like wearing clothes that I'm not excited about. All my favorites are clean. My car is clean. My purse is clean. So I don't have all of these other annoyances adding on top of the fact that it's also miserable outside. You just want the heat to be the number one annoyance for the month. Yeah, because if that's all I'm dealing with, I can deal with that. Sure. Right? But if I'm feeling annoyed by all the other little things that bog me down, then it feels worse. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Got it. Anyway, I'm I'm coming at today is September 1st as we are recording this and it wasn't really hot at all this summer. No, we're getting it now. And then September came on like a wrecking ball. And here's what I don't like is like the state's going to start burning down soon. Like that's the other thing that stresses me out. I'm like, where are the fires? Cause oh my God, I walked outside yesterday afternoon and it was blazing hot and there was like a wind. And I was like, oh no, that's a bad sign. Right? I know. I know. So, but look at me. I'm not just wallowing in my hate. Okay. I mean, it, you guys... Please, if you suffer from Megan's disorder here, I think I, you need to email the show. 
Weigh in on the Instagram post for this episode found in our feed. Let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Mm-hmm. Moving on. Yeah, why don't you go? Mm-mm. I'm looking at your <laughs> note. It says, oops, I did it again. And I have, I have a question. Yeah. Is it an email to the principal? <laughs> It is Megan uh, adjacent to that. I didn't email oh, the principal. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Now what? I first need to preface this by saying that I have not contacted the powers that be in my children's school in years. They have not had reason to hear from me in years. Although I have in the past been like, hey, my kids really love in your class. Like I did that in the past couple of years because being a teacher sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've sent like really nice emails, but We had a situation this week that I wouldn't even mention except on the heels of my double principal email. It feels uh, relevant (laughs) to mention. Um, We had a situation and with my daughter's math class. And I have to tell you that the way they submit homework, this is really like a Gen X, Gen Z clashing situation. Because the way they submit math homework is they do their math homework on paper and then they have to take a photo, scan it as a PDF, upload it to Google Drive, and then upload it to their homework system. I'm no, like, this is get out, stupid. Ridiculous, right? Like, let them turn in the freaking paper. And on the one hand, I un- understand because it makes it so that the teachers aren't carrying around 180 pages of homework. I get it. But it's like, I find it so irritating. And even at back to school night, the teacher was like, I know most of them don't have phones. Most of them do, but they're going to have to use your phone for this. And she does have to use my phone for this, which... It's fine. It's just so dumb. And it's so dumb to the point that my husband even went to the math teachers at his school and said, like, hey, do you guys do this? And they do. So really? he was like, now I'm going with them, too. Right. So anyway, there was a situation where the wrong file got uploaded. It's the first week of school. And my daughter, who is very intrinsically motivated when it comes to her schoolwork, is devastated. Like that she's not going to get credit for this. She's already told us like we practice in class, blah, blah, like sobbing. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not. Again, I'm not usually that like step in. But I was like, just send her an email and let her know what happened and ask if you can resubmit it. Right. Mm -hmm. Then I also sent her an email very nicely. But I was like, I just need you to know what's happening. Like she was telling you it was done on time. I can vouch for it. Mm hmm. Anyway, so she comes back and she's like, I'll accept it this time, but, you know, let's remind her to make sure she's submitting the right one. And so it was very nice because she responded that night. It's like 8 p.m. I don't expect that. Um, But my husband goes, did you tell her (laughs) that their policy for submitting homework is dumb? Let's keep in mind this is coming from another middle school teacher, not someone who's fully out of touch. And I was like, you know, I I said that part to myself. (laughs) I'm not going to start a war with them because it's not my call like I think it's dumb but let's fight one battle at a time is that a school like a school thing like all the math teachers do it I know yes they all do it Uh, and here's the perspective my husband offers he goes you know what they're doing is they're justifying because they originally used bond money taxpayer money to purchase those chromebooks etc etc so he goes this is how they're justifying it they're saying like they're using their chromebooks to do all of these things Okay. That's just too much for me. I, what? It's, it's so dumb. I'm like, could you just turn in the paper, please? Anyway. I, yeah. Wow. So now Megan. we're starting again. I'm trying. Now I'm the resetting. Teacher. The principal and the math teacher. Your photo yeah. is in the teacher's lounge, dude. Right. Your email and photo. So we are now two days since I've had to send an email to the school. Let's We'll oh, check in next gosh. week and see. Gosh, I See mean, we can... I feel like the math teachers should offer some grace to the students, especially the first time. Like, it's very easy to, I mean, how, how many times have you, like, accidentally sent a wrong attachment or no attachment or whatever? You know what I mean? Right. Like, it's very easy to do. So, like, give Whoops, these forgot the attachment. 12 and 13-year-olds a yes. little bit of grace. Come on. Yes. Agree. Agree. <sighs> anyway, uh. I'm that mom. I don't I don't know what has come over me. <laughs> now it's your turn. It's Hoko season. God, I hate it so much. Oh Not my God, the just... actual event, just the abbreviation, let's be clear. 
Right. Because I remember last year I was like, oh, I can't. I'm not going to call it that. Blah. Hoco. Yeah, you got and a high Wofo. schooler. I got a high schooler now and I open our shared calendar and I see that she put on there like Hoco setup, Hoco dance, Hoco mm-hmm. football game. I'm like, oh my God. Is it oh in September God. or October for them? It is in September for them, which mm-hmm. is kind of early, don't you think? It's only a few weeks out. Yes, I was talking to another friend at a local school, and theirs is in September also. Ours is mid-October. But, mm. yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but here it is, Hoco. And I got to tell you, uh, she plans on going, which makes me so happy. Like, date or no date, like, that's not mm-hmm. even a question anymore, which makes me so happy. Like, all mm-hmm. those anxieties of being a teenage girl and hoping that you get asked to the dance mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is, like, doesn't exist anymore because they just go with friends or you know whatever yes um, so she you know she's been looking at dresses and i'm like uh this looks like you're going to the club and not to yeah. the hoko dance <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. i'm just like let's 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 remember like my daughter goes to a private high school i'm like they have you know it's very modest of you know what they allow and and uh-huh. we're first we're first timers i'm like i don't want to be the parent of the daughter who like gets turned away at the dance because her dress is too form fitting or whatever you know i want to sure, follow sure. the rules i want to follow the rules um anyhow she's been sending me like all these like screenshots of dresses because like nobody goes and shops for dresses anymore they just buy them online which okay that's i kind of like wanted the experience of like going to shop with you know my daughter for a dress totally i can remember that ex- having that experience and trying on a million dresses and yeah right it's super fun i told her even even though she's been shopping online i go we're gonna go like in the upcoming weekend we're gonna go just so you can try things on and see you know things fit differently you know whatever anyway these pictures of some of the stuff she's sending like one has like a chain strap like the straps of the dresses are chains. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, those are gonna fall off your shoulders all night long. Like, how that doesn't yeah, work. Yeah. And You're be and and I would like to give you an update. Um, I don't know if this is something we've talked about on the podcast, but I know you and I have talked about it. And it's the uh, the way kids dance now. They just jump. They just jump. Mm-hmm. She went to a, 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 and they had like a welcome back dance or whatever. And she, and we're like, did you dance? She's like, oh, everybody just jumps. And I was like, well, yeah. at least there's no grinding, you know? <laughs> right. It's funny because I first heard that from a friend at another school prior to my son's first high school dance. And he reported the same thing. And then when we were buying winter, wofo winter formal shoes for him, <laughs> I was like, can you dance in those? He goes, you mean, can I jump in them? <laughs> Right. That's all they do. Speaking of shoes, I'm like, well, what kind of shoes are you going to wear? I'm going to wear tennis shoes. I was like, okay. Everybody. That, that was like the shoe of choice at our Hoko last year. I just, I, I'm old. I'm old. I'm old. Oh, I know. I know. I'm old. I, I probably had know, died I'm... to match shoes for one of my. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. And like your date, like had the, the matching um, tie or Cumberbund yeah, and we'd whatever. coordinate our flowers to get. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Moving on. Yesterday you were at Target. Yeah, and you sent me a picture, and I have to ask, like, why is Target failing us so hard right now? Everything is empty, especially the beauty department. Right? The beauty department struggles hard. It just looks ravaged. It's just completely like bare, and what's there has been like opened or looked at or sampled or swatched or dirty everything's dirty so is it is it a supply chain issue is it a target stocking issue or is it a social media issue because and hear Hmm. me out okay i saw a recommendation for a glossy lip balm on tiktok the other day and someone was like i ran into my target to get it before tiktok sold it out and i Hmm. feel like you know obviously we've had beauty youtubers before but i feel like the TikTok beauty community is probably even bigger than the YouTube beauty community was. And Mm -hmm. just the sheer volume of content because it's in 30 second clips that we're consuming is Mm -hmm. more than watching a 20 minute video. So 
Is that driving it? Is it a combination of all of these things? I don't know. But every time I go to try and find something at Target, it's a miracle if what I want is there. Well, that's so interesting. You bring up the social media thing and and TikTok because like I follow a ton of like all things Target and there'll be like cute fall stuff or cute clothes or beauty products or homewares or whatever. And it's like always gone in my store. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if that's what it is. It's got to be. Well, and the same thing happens. Like I'll see Walmart fashion recommendations and I click through and it's all sold out. That's um, so crazy. Clothing recommendations are like, this is the must-have tank top for fall. Target, sold out. Gone. And I don't know if you've seen these articles about how Target and Walmart are going to start having like these deep discounts because they're, they've are they over-purchased some of these items. I um, did read an article about that. Like vacuums and homeware and things like that. So maybe this is just a post-pandemic readjustment, but I don't like it. I don't like it either. I need you to give us a Patty Stanger update, please. So if you don't know what we're talking about, we discussed this in depth on our Patreon episode, but we also have discussed it on Instagram. We have a reel with a clip from our Patreon episode. And the short version is Patty Stanger liked a bunch of our stories multiple days in a row. She does not follow us. We're not quite sure how she found us. And it started with her liking stories that had absolutely nothing to do with her. And then she continued to like the stories in which she was mentioned. She has since then liked a few on and off of our stories. Mm -hmm. Never any additional interaction. Although I did tag her in a reel I posted this morning. So we shall see what happens. And let it be known, she does not follow us. No. So why would she be coming specifically to our account to look at stories? No, I don't know. I'm convinced it's somebody we know handles her social media. I think that's that's the best guess. We may never know. The full story, you guys are gonna have to check out our Patreon. It was so funny because there was like stuff happening in real time as as we were talking about it. It was was great. Still makes my day every time I think about it. Let's take a quick break and come right back to talk all things pop culture. It's time for Pop Culture Club for the month of September, where we take a look back at things we have been watching, reading, and listening to, and let you know if we recommend them and think you should watch them and our thoughts. I would like to do a quick update where... I let you know that I made a goal at the beginning of summer. I made many goals at the beginning of summer. And I think we knew by midsummer that I just needed to wipe that slate clean. But Mm -hmm. just for closing the loop, one of my goals was to watch movies that I hadn't, like I haven't watched a lot of movies in the last number of years. And I watched none of them. Zero. Zero? Zero of the movies on my list. Mm Oh, that's sad. I mean, I watched movies, but none of the catch up movies the ones you (laughs) wanted to see yeah no none of them so anyway that's all right let's see what am i watching i am watching big brother and if you're in the big brother community you know that as of right now things are real hot yeah they are the thing about big brother is it's on three nights a week you could just watch the cbs show and obviously you have a, a medium picture of what's happening but They're filming 24 hours a day. And if you want to watch the live feed of what's happening 24 hours a day, you can do that. And people do do that. And there's this whole other narrative. Obviously, CBS is going to craft a narrative in their three hours of weekly television that they get to put out. Right. And it doesn't tell the full story. Mm -hmm. And their casting needs to do a better job of weeding out the racists. Yeah. It's been kind of, I mean, all this whole, like, storyline has been brewing for weeks now and yes. I, I follow like along on reddit to try to get like the inside scoop for the people uh-huh. who watch the feeds 24 7 i do not so i catch up that way it's it's kind of gross and ugly and there's like all kinds of stuff like on twitter and it just makes me super uncomfortable watching this show a show that i once really loved i agree I used to love this show, too. What I think 
needs to happen in the Big Brother casting is not only are you weeding out for someone who is blatantly racist, Mm -hmm. but you also, when you've got someone coming in who's lived a super sheltered life in a very white community and wasn't allowed to see rated R movies, et cetera, et cetera, you know that sending this person into a house with multiple personalities and people of different backgrounds, you're setting them up Mm. to do the I didn't know any better. Yeah. It, it's almost done, right? Are we almost at the end of season here? I don't know when it ends. End of September, maybe. We've got a month left, I would guess. Speaking of reality TV shows, you want to hear what I'm watching? Yeah. I have just recently tuned into the brand new Netflix series, Selling the OC. Yeah? It's terrible. Oh, no. <laughs> so bad. It's okay. I, I don't like that franchise at all. It's just, it's too much like personal drama. Yeah, yeah. And, I want to I want to see like the houses and yes. like, that kind of stuff, especially in Orange County, like these mega mansions and stuff. I, like I want to see them. These are like literally in my backyard, and, right? Um, not that I live <laughs> like okay. I'm we like, know what way you mean. way inland compared to these, these are like, neighborhoods mega we're familiar with I, more than we are with L.A. little neighborhoods. Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. So. Um, so that like interests me, but like I don't care about the. It's just so like, what's the word I'm looking for? It's so overly like produced and mm-hmm, like. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I was real sick the other day, and I was like, "This is the perfect mindless TV that I'm gonna put on <laughs> and drift a sleep to, you know, drift away to." Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's not saying I might not. I'll probably go back because I want to see. I want to see, you know, like. What's her face? The chick that's with Tarek El Musso now. Who they're yeah. married, but she they live. She lives here in Orange County. So I'm like, well, is she gonna be in the Orange County office? Like, I just want to see, like, you know, yeah. how that plays out. Anyway, anyway, the other, um, the other reality TV show that is a not miss for me is Below Deck Med. It is currently airing on Bravo and on Peacock right now. It's just so good. It's it, it, you should watch it. It's better than any other Bravo reality TV show. Oh, well, I watched a couple episodes of Below Deck Down Under and was underwhelmed. <gasps> no, Down mm. Under was such a good season. With Captain Jason was so hot. He is hot. He's very handsome. And the chef that was such a is jerk. such a dick. Yeah. Yeah. And Aisha, the stew, I... She's like a fan favorite. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sad you were underwhelmed. I was. At home, it said must-see TV. In reality TV adjacent watching, Mm -hmm. I have been watching a show that is part reality, part docu-series called The Rehearsal on HBO Max. And it is, without a doubt, the oddest show I have ever watched in my entire life. That's that weird thumbnail that kind of creeps me out when I see it. The yes, guy sitting the at the dinner table with the like with mannequins. Dummies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's no, thank you. The, the thumbnail is odd. The thumbnail is more creepy than the show itself. The show itself is not creepy. The premise of the show is it's hosted by Nathan Fielding, who is a comedian. But the premise of this show is. He allows people to rehearse major life situations, and by doing that, for example, in the first episode. There was a man who needed to confront his friend who he had been lying to for a long time. And so in order for them to conduct this rehearsal, they hire an actress who surreptitiously meets this friend so that she can adopt her mannerism so that she can play the part of this friend in their role playing. And then not only they're not just like sitting on the bench play acting. No, no. They build a replica of the bar in which this interaction is going to take place and then they hire actors to play the extras milling around the bar and play the people working in the bar and they build it in this warehouse and then they rehearse all these potential scenarios and it there are so many the first episode is the most benign but I also think it's one of the best there are so many little twists in the first episode that I don't want to tell you about because I feel like you really need to experience them in the moment and at the end of every episode you're going what the hell the rehearsals get progressively more intense and involved and high stakes and after every episode i go on twitter just so i can see other people talking about how bizarre this show is Uh uh-huh that said i couldn't stop watching it 
I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Hey, want to watch a scary movie? Oh, I have something to say about this, but go ahead. Tell me. Uh, the Black Phone is a movie on Peacock right now, and it yeah. features, um, what's what's his name? You know, I should have been prepared. Ethan, Ethan Hawke. Ethan Hawke. He, he kidnaps these kids in the 70s. It's quite terrifying. Um, I, w- I watched it on my phone, so it wasn't like I watched it like on a big screen in my house or anything. Yeah. But, you know, it, 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 I control the terror if it's on my mm-hmm. phone, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, it was kind of scary and then kind of dumb. Um, Mm -hmm. so if you're looking to like dip your toe into some scary movies with the upcoming Halloween season, I would give this one, watch it in the daytime. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put a pin in that particular movie because I have something to say about that in a minute that we'll get to, but boy, I have two Netflix shows, one that I love, one that was meh. And those two shows are uncoupled starring Neil Patrick Harris. Created by Darren Starr, who's the creator of Sex and the Beverly City. Hills 90210. Come on. <laughs> Beverly Hills 90210. Uh, I actually don't know if he was the creator. He might have been like the writer, producer or something or but other. Also Sex and the City. I didn't make that yeah, up, sex, right? No. Oh, yeah, okay. And Sex and the City. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is the intro is basically the Sex and the City music. I'm like, you could. It, it's like a slight tweak. I was like, really? It's, it's the male version of Sex and the City. I think it so. It is. It's not as good. It's not... Look, I watched the entire thing in two days because it was very easy to watch. I really like Neil Patrick Harris. He plays a lot of kind of D-bag characters, like, you know, his character on um, How I Met Met Your Your Mother Mother. and the character he plays in the Harold and Kumar movies. He didn't... That was not the character he played. He was just kind of, I think, his most real-to-life character he's played, and I enjoyed Mm -hmm. him. I thought the show was just okay. That said, I watched the entire thing. But a show on Netflix that I love is Never Have I Ever. Season three dropped. I know you were not a huge fan of this season. I loved it. I love that show. That's like one of the shows I've like put on and then I zone out and like three episodes have gone by and I've been on my phone for two hours. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just just really love it. And I cry at the end of every season. There's always like a sweet family moment that I love. It doesn't because keep there's my interest. I don't um, know what it is. I just think it's lovely. And there's these like dual storylines of life at home and kind of like how culturally that differs from what she wants socially and at school. And I mm-hmm. just love it. I love it. Hey, I don't say it's a bad show. It's a good show. Okay. I just wish it could keep my interest a little bit more. You need a little more scandal. You know, you know how I am. <laughs> I got another uh, series that mm-hmm. I really, really am enjoying. And I don't hear anybody talking about it, which kind of like worries me. It's called The Resort. It's on Peacock. Hey, and I got to tell you, Peacock is like one of my go-to streaming services now. They have a lot of good programming on that on that streaming service. Yes, yeah, they got to the fight, fight for those subscriptions. Yeah, I know, but I enjoy it. It's like about this man and wife, man and wife, husband and wife, and they go to this like resort like this Mexican resort and they um I know undercover like low-key try to like solve a mystery there it's 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 like a little like Scooby-Doo slash Uh um like real life I don't know I, I kind of enjoy it there was one episode that was so incredibly good and well done and Everything else past, I think it was like the third episode. Everything else past that has been kind of a letdown, but it's a decent show. I think you should check it out if you're interested in like a little bit of a mystery, you know, who done it, what happened, but like funny and weird and I don't know. Bizarre. Well, I watched the first two episodes. Did you? And I did. And what's interesting is, you know, this couple goes on this trip and they're kind of in a weird place in their relationship Mm -hmm. and the acting is so fantastic i'm like you have made me so uncomfortable watching you two together like you people who aren't quite sure what's happening in your marriage right now um yes i will continue watching it well the my my favorite episode has to do with the resort owner and about him so i'm curious to hear what what you think about it once you watch it my last recommendation is Julia on HBO Max. I find it 
delightful. I love shows that are easy and unstressful to watch. And of course, a show about a woman making a public access television show and the drama in it is very low stakes, but it's delightful. It's really good. It's I really love it. good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I watched that too. I haven't finished it. The I can't remember the actress name who plays Julia. She was also in a show called Happy Valley, which is on Netflix. She's so good. I'm like, so has good. she been, was she nominated for this? Sarah Lancashire is the actress's name. It's got a great cast. I was like, Judith Light, where did you come from? <gasps> Judith Light was so fantastic in this. And then Niles, who was her husband on yes. Cheers, is in this too. It's so crazy to me. Really enjoying it. You have one more. I do have one more. It's called Honor Society. It's a movie on Paramount Plus. It's a teenager, you know, high school movie. Don't watch it with your kids. We made the mistake of watching it with our teenage daughter, and there was a lot of BJ jokes in there and just stuff that made me super uncomfortable. (laughs) But I enjoyed it quite a bit. So watch it by yourself. That actress is in the Spider-Man franchise, and I like her a lot. Her character in Spider-Man is super annoying, and even the preview that I've seen, I'm like, oh, she's the perfect actress for this. Oh, oh, for Honor Society, she was yeah, also yeah, yeah. in um, Mayor of Mayor M A R E. Yeah, whatever that show was on HBO, she she played the teenage daughter in that movie too, or that oh. show too. She's good. She's a good actress. Yeah, I like her. Are you ready for books? Oh. Am I ready for books? So ready for books. Okay, go first. I am currently reading. I'm almost done with it. It's called I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette mm-hmm. McCurdy. She was in that show, iCarly, mm-hmm. a show that was always on in our house. It seems like my daughter loved that show. Oh, it's so disturbing. So, so mm-hmm. disturbing and heartbreaking and tragic and triggering and very well written i'm obviously listening to the audible version of it really good really really good yeah that's on my list i'd love to listen Mm -hmm. my first book is sea of tranquility by emily st john mandel she has written several books she also wrote station 11 which was adapted into a tv show people love station 11 i have never been able to finish it i started it twice and i always just abandon it and i don't know what it is about that book but i picked this one up and i was about 30 pages in and I was like wow this is very boring and then I heard Knox McCoy talk about it on the podcast and he was like it's time travel and it's a pandemic and I was like what so I picked it back up and really enjoyed it it is time travel-y and overlapping pandemic-y and I really liked it my next book is a book that you read you got an early copy of it is that right I did it's called Months All of Ago. This by Rebecca Wolf. It's a memoir about the death of her husband and her unhappy marriage and finding herself after he dies. It was gritty. Mm -hmm. The first half of it, I really, really enjoyed. The second half, not so much, but it was entertaining to listen to. I don't want to say entertaining because she talks in depth about her husband's, you know, battle with stage four pancreatic cancer you know that's not super enjoyable to listen to but her, the writing was really well done I enjoyed it quite a bit tore through I, it as you mentioned I also read that it felt a little voyeuristic I don't yes. know Rebecca yes. but I have followed her for years and years and years online and so I knew the bare bones outline of her story I knew when Hal was diagnosed and I Again, she like you said, she goes for it. And so if this felt different than just picking up the memoir of a woman whose husband had died very young. This felt like, oh, I'm reading the intimate details of a person who I know, even though I obviously don't know her personally. I think it's an interesting read. It is an interesting read, for sure. For sure. My next book is a kind of dark book. It's called The Displacements by Bruce Holsinger. It came out this summer, and it is the story of... It's set several years in the future. It's not science fiction, although I guess you could argue that it is about a Category 6 hurricane that basically Mm -hmm. destroys all of Miami and then goes on to destroy parts of Texas as well. And so there's this 
huge displacement of people. And what's interesting is that there's a lot of references to previous actual disasters like Katrina, where they were putting people in these mega shelters. And the majority of this book takes place in a FEMA camp where these people have been displaced until they find another place. And the main character family was this wealthy family. The husband was a neurosurgeon. They lived waterfront in Miami. And then come to find out their life wasn't exactly what it seemed. And now they're living in this FEMA camp. And there's a lot of interlocking storylines. It is not a happy read and it is a little bit like oh good climate change is coming for us but yeah. i did enjoy it yeah. it was a oh. it was a compelling read oh interesting i have two other books they're in the queue i haven't actually started them yet uh one is called things we do in the dark by jennifer hillier and the last thing he told me by laura dave i uh i have a couple of friends on instagram who are, are constantly sharing like the books that they're reading and these ones speak to me. They're like a little bit dark, a little bit mystery, a little bit like murdery probably. And so um, they're next on my list to listen to. And I have read that Laura Dave book, The Last Thing He Told Me. And it's a good read. Ooh. I think you'll like it. Oh, hey, awesome. My last two are lighter. The first is The Hotel Nantucket by Ellen Hildebrand. I, Ellen Hildebrand comes out with a book every summer. I read everything she writes. I've only ever not liked one it was actually a series of books of hers. I typically really enjoyed them, but I really enjoyed this. 95% of her novels are set on Nantucket, which I love, but it was just ever so slightly tweaked to be slightly different from the way her novels usually run that I thought it was great. It felt like a really fresh take on what she does. Her books make me want to spend an entire summer or a month of a summer on Nantucket when I finish this. I told my husband, by the way, when we're retired, we're spending a month in Nantucket. It's happening at some point in our Why future. Why don't you just move there? No. Oh, well, you don't. There's No, I don't want to live there. And I think it's dead in the winter. Uh, I don't want to. I mean, I've never been there. I don't know if I want to live there, but I would like to. I feel like I'd like to rent a house and spend a month there in the summer. That's what her books cool. make me want to do. Cool. The last book is a middle grade book. It is called Starfish. The author, author is Lisa Phipps, and it is written in open verse. And normally I would open a book like that and be like, nope, I'm not, I'm not, no, this is not for me. But what does that even mean? Explain it's like it poetry that doesn't rhyme. Listening, like me. It's it what? Poetry that, poetry that doesn't rhyme, essentially. Oh, no. No, 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 um, no, 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 <laughs> But it reads very easily. I mean, it is, it's an easy read, and a friend of mine on Instagram had recommended this book and I trust her recommendations. And so I powered through it's a quick read, but it is the story of a girl. I would say she's maybe 12. I have forgotten, but she's a young girl and um, she struggles with some body issues and with some bullying. And then she experiences some of that at home. And there's kind of a split between the way her parents treat her and uh, how her siblings treat her as a result. And what was interesting is as a parent reading this, the way the parents react to her, I was like, please internalize all of this information about the way this fictional girl is talking about how she perceives her parents. Mm -hmm. I think it's an interesting read as a parent. I think it's a great read for kids of that age just to kind of see how their words are perceived. And I just think it's sure. a great book altogether. Are you ever going to come back around and talk about my movie? Oh, well, let's home? do that now when we get to what we're listening to. Can okay. I go first? Because you have a bunch and I've got like nothing. Yes. So let's, let's tie that in. The new thing that I am listening to lately is a podcast called Too Scary Didn't Watch. And it is hosted by three women, one of whom loves scary movies, the other who don't. And I'll be honest, I've only listened to one episode. But that episode was the Black Phone episode. And what happens is... The, the one who likes scary movies watches the scary movie. In this case, she saw it in the theater and then she comes back and she tells the entire story and they have a discussion about it. Mm -hmm. And what I like is I'm never going to watch these movies because I don't like scary movies. But by listening to this podcast, I get to have this experience of like, I know what that movie's about. I can enjoy the 
conversation that happens about it. Like when people talk about it, I'm like, I know what they're talking about, but I don't have to experience it. Oh, so do you have any notes on the black phone? Uh, I mean, all I'll say about the black phone is there's a scene that she describes where he's like actively trying the combination to get out of the room and the bad guy's sleeping behind him. And I'm like, I am actively sweating. Just listen to the discussion of this. I am so glad I didn't have to watch it because I would have been like watching it through my fingers. Yeah. That was an intense scene. Very scary. Like those are, those are the things you have nightmares about, you know what I mean? Trying to get out of somewhere like, (sighs) yes. And the fact that his mask changes kind of depending on his mood, that's freaking terrifying. So, but I'm surprised you liked it because it's a little supernatural. It was a little supernatural, but it was dark enough, like not to be like too (laughs) made up for it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I am listening to you, and we talked about this recently on Patreon, but Monday through Friday, Jeff Lewis Live on Sirius. Me Just too. love it so much. Just love it. so I never miss it now. Never, ever miss it. No, I haven't missed it's, it in a long time. Also, I'm also, look at, these are my go-tos. Juicy Scoop with Heather McDonald. She's often on Jeff Lewis. She has uh-huh. been, I guess, the last couple. I enjoy her. She always talks about, like, all the, like, pop culture gossip going around they've been friends since college did you know that well they both went to usc right yeah and they were friends there i had to look up you know he went to modern day high school and he graduated the same year some friends of ours did so i need to ask them like if they remember him not like it matters i'm just so curious anyway i enjoy her podcast and a lot of people don't like it i she's kind of one of my go-to listens oh good also, Rob has a podcast. He 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 listens or he recaps a lot of like TV shows. I only tune in for his Big Brother recaps. Mm-hmm. And a lot of his guests also like watch the live feed, so they'll yeah. talk about that stuff. So like, if I'm not again, like I said, I either read it on Reddit or I listen to it on Rob has a podcast, so I know what's going on in the house. I enjoy that podcast a lot. It's been a while since you've listened to it, right? I haven't listened this season. I used to listen a lot, and I like that you get a lot of insight about things that connections that you may not have made to past seasons and to decisions that are made and things that are happening on the live feeds. I like it a lot as a casual viewer of the show. Yeah, yeah, me too. Okay, my final what I'm listening to is a music recommendation. Yeah. Last Friday night... I went with my teenage daughter and her friend to go see The Driver Era, which That's is... hard to say. It is very hard to say. If you know who Austin Moon is, raise your hand. He was on a show called Austin and Allie on the Disney Channel. His actual real name is Ross Lynch, and he has this band with his brother Rocky. And their music is pretty dang good. I would have to say, like, I really enjoyed the show, like... He's it was quite entertaining. So I'm gonna link like my two favorite songs in our show notes. But I wanna also I have a uh something to admit, a confession, if you will. Okay, okay. I tweeted today that I think that Ross Lynch should be cast as Hayes Campbell in that in that the movie adaptation of that book. Oh my god, the what is it called now? You. The idea of you by Robin Lee. Yes. I don't think he, I don't think he, it's been cast yet. Now he's like 26 years old, but I'm sure he could play like a 19 or 20 year old. He sings in, in real life and he acts. He's like a actor too, so I think it's a good fit. He was quite sexy. I felt a little weird. Okay. <laughs> I mean, he like took his shirt off and stuff. Like he yeah, was yeah. really teasing the teenagers in the crowd, if you yeah. know what I mean. And their moms. And I was like one of three parents there. I was <laughs> kind of embarrassing, but it was also quite entertaining. So, but speaking of, I did just look, I, that movie, the idea of you, which is an adaptation of that book that I read, you've read it. It's really good. It's going to be on Amazon prime video. I did not know that. That's like a recent announcement. And what's her name? And what? Hathaway. Hathaway is definitely attached to it. Yeah, and I got to tell you, the Facebook group 
the idea of you Facebook group is not happy about the, that decision. And I think they just need to simmer down. Is that wrap it up? We will be back with another pop culture club episode next month. We got a lot of fall releases coming out. I'm getting very excited for the new fall TV. So stay tuned for that. But of course we'll be back every week and we'll be right back with Megan and Wendy approved. <laughs> two Target approved items this week. Yes, we do. Exciting as we just dogged on Target <laughs> earlier. Uh, no. Why don't you go first? Well, Morphe is a makeup brand that recently launched at Target. Usually it's available at Ulta, I think. But now that uh-huh. I think that Ulta and Target have this like partnership, I think we're getting some uh, like, higher end. I wouldn't even consider Morphe a higher end. It's like a mid-level brand. Um, Mm -hmm. anyway, but now they're introduced at Target. I recently purchased the Morphe 18T Truth and Bear Artistry Palette for $20. You get 18 different shadows. Mm -hmm. It's really nice, neutral. There's some great mattes. There's some pretty shimmers in it. Um, for 20 bucks, it was, I feel, a steal. They have some five color shadow palettes in that Mm -hmm. collection that are seven dollars that i would have picked one up had they had any in stock but they didn't i know this palette here this 18 palette is not even available for purchase in store i bought it online what do you got as wendy mentioned i was in target last night and i bought a new pair of pajamas because i love new pajamas i love a pajama set and these are from the stars above line it's a tank top and shorts and they come in several different colors i bought teal they have stripes gray and white stripes and they have a pink it's 15 bucks tank top shorts very comfortable as i mentioned it's 105 degrees here today so we don't get real fall my friend caitlin called it fool's fall the other day Maybe <laughs> i love that um so I love a new pair of pajamas and I love an inexpensive pair of pajamas and I'm really like a matched set pajama kind of lady and for 15 bucks sold. I know. I saw you share those on Instagram and I was like, oh, they're shorts. I don't like sleeping in shorts. I hate my legs touching each other. I hate it so much. I'd rather wear like a really lightweight bottom and a tank top, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I cannot stand my legs touching each other while I'm sleeping. All right. That's it. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the podcast. If you have things you would like to share with us, does the heat also stress you out? Hop on over to Instagram, leave a comment on the post all about this episode, or shoot us an email, Megan and Wendy at gmail.com. And before you go, before you tap out of your podcast app, tap over, leave a review. We'd love to hear your five-star thoughts about our show. Until next time, have a great week. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.